Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2020, and today I want to talk to you all about relational PTSD. You know, so many people on my Facebook timeline are expressing their experiences of being in toxic relationships where they now have to go to therapy, they now have to take medication because of a toxic relationship that they were once in. And just to disclose a bit of my own story, you know, I've been in a couple of toxic relationships. And my last relationship was, I would say, it didn't last very long, but it was the most toxic because of the dashed hopes and the whirlwind. It was a whirlwind romance. And, you know, that relationship was with a narcissist. And after that relationship, I mourned for a very, very long time. I was very sad. I was depressed. I was bitter. I was angry. I went through the gamut of emotions. All the five stages of grief from depression, you know, from first denial. Let's start with that. I was in denial. I had anger, I was bargaining, I was depressed. I finally accepted. I accepted the fact that this person never loved me and that basically I was just living in a dream world. You know, but initially I was just a wreck. And I realized that these relationships nowadays, they could really, really affect your mental health. You know, there are people right now that are sitting in mental hospitals, that are sitting in jail behind some toxic relationship gone bad. You know, they're sitting behind bars the rest of their lives destroyed because of what someone else did to them. And that's why I say to everyone out there, please be careful who you date and who you bring into your life and into your home because some people, they really get under your skin and some people could literally cause you to get a mental health diagnosis. You know, one gentleman on my Facebook page, he now has PTSD. He was diagnosed with PTSD because he can't even go outside. He can't even do normal activities because they're closely associated with a relationship that he once shared with somebody. You know, people don't realize how much it hurts to be cheated on, to be lied to, to be abused and verbally assaulted, physically assaulted. They don't realize that trauma will live in the cells for years to come. They don't get that and they don't care. You know, they don't care. There's a lot of narcissistic individuals out there who really don't care how someone else feels. All that they want is supply. They don't care how they get it. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about your rights. They don't care about nothing. All they want is to feel better about themselves and to feel in control and to feel, you know, superior. And so to all those who are now in toxic relationships, you better get out. You better get out now before you get thrown out. Because honestly, from a person, take it from me, a person that has survived a toxic relationship, you definitely want to be the one to leave first. You know, oftentimes if you are kind hearted, good hearted, you're so worried about disappointing them that you don't care if you'll be devastated. My new philosophy is this. I'd rather disappoint you than devastate myself. Because they can get over disappointment, but devastation, that takes years to recover from. Years. I think about the women in my family. You know, many of the women, they just, after the abuses that they experienced at the hands of these toxic men, a lot of the women, they bowed out gracefully. They said, nah, I don't want to be in a relationship no more. One of my aunts, she's had a saying. She said, you couldn't melt a man and pour him on me. You know, you couldn't melt a man and pour him on me. My grandmother, she just stopped dating altogether because she went through so much hell with these men. She went through hell. 
always having a fight, always being abused, unappreciated. My mother, my mother also. After marrying so many dubs and so many broken men, she's just like, whatever. You know, she don't see men the same, you know? So it's like, I come from a generation of women who have dated men and tried to love them and only ended up with trauma. <sighs> so my thing is this, if you're gonna be in a relationship with somebody, if that's what you choose to do, you better damn make sure you know who you're dealing with because it could literally cost you your life, literally. You know, I'm a man who has a same-sex attraction to other men. And truth be told, I'm trying to find my way out of this maze because this ain't it. This ain't it. After all the things that I've been through with these dudes, from abuse to lies to infidelity, to gaslighting, to, to, to smear campaigns hurled against me, trying to assassinate my character when all I tried to do was love somebody and here somebody wants to just talk about me like a dog. Man, it really makes you regret being a good person, you know? And that's when you know you're dealing with a toxic relationship. Me personally, do I feel like I have relational PTSD? I think I have traits, traits. There's a part of me sometimes still wakes up with the bitterness, still wakes up with the anger, still is mad at myself for betraying myself, for putting somebody else's needs above my own, for not making sure that I was good, that my needs were met. For first not identifying my needs because I basically projected my happiness and put it in the hands of another person. And that's the worst mistake you can do also. Take your joy, your needs, your feelings, and say, here, here, you do it. You make me happy. No, 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 no. Your happiness is an inside job. That's for you to do. If you don't do it, ain't nobody else gonna do it. And all you have to do, all that's left to do is blame yourself. Because you should never put your happiness in the hands of another person. Especially with these men nowadays. I'm going to just say that because we, as men, have got a lot of answering to do to both those who love us and also our creator because we're just not living up to our assignment as we should, as we should. And there are a lot of reasons why, you know, the society, you know, it really discourages our emotions and how we're always shamed for feeling things as men. We're always expected to live up to this ideal man, this alpha male who doesn't cry, doesn't get weak, doesn't feel anything. You know, so there's a lot of explanations as to why we're not living up to our assignment, but it's time that we as men begin to reclaim, reclaim our masculine strength and reclaim our identity as men. You know, because if we don't, we are on the verge of extinction. And all we're going to do is keep on hurting other people, hurting other people because we're hurt. And hurt people hurt people. So I say all this to say, you know, for those who are out there right now suffering from relational PTSD, I get it. I get it. And it's going to be a slow, gradual recovery. You're going to have to slowly reintroduce yourself to the same things that you once enjoyed. You're going to have to find new pathways and build new roads, you know? Just to, just to regain your sense of joy and re-enter society again. And it's just sad. It's sad how someone you love can incarcerate your feelings and then you have to work on re-entering society again. <sighs> you know, don't let your feelings put you in jail. True love is freedom. 
True love offers a sense of freedom. It doesn't put you in a cage. It doesn't make you feel ashamed. It doesn't criticize and beat on you and hurt on you. Under the guise of love. Oh, I'm just saying that because I love you. No, 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 no. Love makes you better. It makes you look better. It makes you feel full. It gives you confidence. It makes you want to do great things. Anything else in love. Cut it. Cut it. So, for all those who got relational PTSD, don't worry. And here's another thing. Here's another, I say, hopeful, hopeful takeaway. Everybody that does you wrong, everybody that cuts your throat, they're going to know what it's like to experience the pain. Because karma, huh, she can be a very, very fair and judicious and evil, evil person. So don't you worry. You know, because what someone plants is what they grow. And what they reap is what they sow. You put out awful seeds of lies, hurt, infidelity, deception, pretending that you're good when you know you're wicked. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You just incur a lot of debt. And eventually, life will come to collect. So... Don't worry, for those who hurt you, God is not one to be mocked. He will definitely execute justice and they will be made to understand. They will be made to understand everything that you went through times 10. See, when it comes back to you, it's never how you doled it out. It's always worse. <laughs> and that I know from experience too. So don't you worry. You continue to be a good person. You continue to love hard on people and love hard on yourself. And don't let yourself go for no relationship. Always hold on to yourself. Always. You know? So, I hope this was helpful. And I wish everybody out there a safe journey and a wonderful 2021. Peace.